Hello, in this video we're going to look at how to make a bar or column chart using Microsoft Excel. As you can see, I've put in a series of um, flavors and some numbers underneath. So I'm going to assume that I polled my class and these are the results that I received for these particular flavors. Now to make a chart is very simple. The first thing you must do is you must select the data so that Excel knows what information is to be included in the chart. So I'm now going to insert, and you can see that this lists as a column, line, pie, or bar. And um, Excel calls this a column chart. I tend to think of it as a bar chart, but um, the bars for Excel are horizontal. So I'm going to choose column. And you can see that I have a variety of choices here. I would recommend starting with the simplest one. This is a 3D version here, but I'm going to start with a 2D version. Note that there are other choices, but these are not traditional bar charts. This is a stock, stacked column, uh, meaning that it's showing you how the components make up the total. And um, this one is a 100% stacked column. So we really want to use that first one. And very simply, we have our chart. The first thing I can do is I can grab it by a corner and make it larger if I like. And what I want to note is that this chart or this graph is made up of a series of different objects. This is the legend object. These are the bars themselves. These lines. The major chart the background area. So all of these things can be edited and changed if you'd like or if your students would like and you just have to get the correct selection. So the first thing I look at is I have this um, legend but it really isn't it's really more confusing than illuminating at this point. It doesn't give me any valuable information so I can click on it simply hit my delete key and it will be gone. One thing students can do simply, especially if you don't have a lot of time, is use under chart tools the design feature. And this will just quickly apply a design to your chart. Okay, so anyone you'd like. Okay, in order to move the chart itself, like I just did, you, you want to be careful because if you grab it in certain places, here I'm on the bar, I can't move those. But if I get it in the right location, whoop, now look at that, that's the chart itself. So you can see that that's different than the overall block. And that's where I want to be to move the chart. I want to be away from all the other objects, maybe up in a corner. And I'm finding that this um, large chart here is a little inconvenient, but I'll adjust that in a minute. Now note that if I click off the chart on just some, some other space, I lose those tools. So if you can't find your tools for dealing with the format, layout, um, styling of the chart, etc., just click anywhere on the chart and they'll reappear. So these are design. Let's take a look at layout. I can put in a chart title. And I'll just type in. And that will appear right up at the top. Now, I have a couple of options here. If I want to move the location, I want to grab it when I have the four-sided arrows. So if I'm in the center, I'm going to go into editing mode. But if I get it with the four arrows, I can shift it down into place. If I actually want it above the chart instead of in there, I can simply click on this chart object, grab the corner, and reduce the size of that object to leave me enough room um, for my title above. Other things you would always want in a graph would be axis titles. So the horizontal axis, we're labeling what are these things. These are um, ice cream flavors. Oop, clicked off. And on the vertical axis, you have a couple of choices here. I'm going to go with rota rotated title, but you're welcome to try the others. So that's my unit of measure, and I'm measuring in students who made that choice. Let me just adjust a little bit again. There we go. Now, 
from this point, I may want to make some changes to my um, size or font or something else like that. Um, generally, generally, the thing I'm most interested in is getting it readable, so getting the fonts correct. And that works just like any other editing in Excel or, or Word or something like that. Like I can click on this title, and I think this should be a little bigger here. So once I click on it, let me just make it a, say, a 14. Since this is really its companion, I want those to match. And then if I decided that meant that 18 wasn't big enough, I could adjust that. Now I could, of course, adjust the color. Uh, yeah, let's just leave that as a red for now. I could adjust the color of the fonts. If I wanted to adjust the um, actual numbers or direct labels, same thing, just click on them. And this applies to everything, color, um, bold, italics, underline, font, etc. So I won't go through all of those. You can also adjust, if you, you'd like or if your students would like, you can adjust the actual bars. So if I were to click on here, notice that all of the bars become selected. I can then right click and say um, format data series and I'll get all my choices here. So one choice is fill and right now it's set to automatic. But if I put solid fill, I can choose a color. And you can see that that changed right there. Okay, another option is to make each of the bars a different color. And you do that the same way, except that after you select, your first click will select all the bars. Click on a particular bar again, and you'll notice now it's only that bar that's selected. Then you can right click and come in here. Here's your fill color. Um, other options would be gradient. Okay, where you're, let's say, doing one of these. Now kids love to play with these things. In a lot of cases, I don't recommend it. I mean, they love it and it's fun and it's great, but sometimes they make this chart so busy as it becomes unreadable. So while I will allow them to do it, I emphasize that the information on the chart is the important thing and, and that it has to be clear. So um, clarity of information should be utmost in their mind as they, as they work with the chart. One other interesting option, and kids really love this one, there are, there are a number of options in there actually. So you actually have border colors here. So I have a, a solid line. Um, I can change the color of the outside of that line. And I don't know if you see that very well, but you know that's what that's what's going on there. Um, border styles, I wouldn't mess with these too much. You could make the outsides actually dotted for some reason. You could put a shadow on them, um, you could put them into a 3D format. But what I want to do now is basically look at the fill. And another option we have is to put in a picture or texture. Now, by default, it's going to go to a texture. These are your limited textures that have been around. Um, in Microsoft Office forever. But if somebody really wanted to make um, something with look like crumbled paper, they could do that. One fun option you have, if you have the time, is to actually put pictures in the bars themselves. So in order to do that, I've already chosen picture or texture fill, but instead of choosing a texture, I'm just going to browse to a file. Now I've saved a series of these, so I'm going to get the one for chocolate for this particular bar. And by default, it's going to come out on stretch. And you can see that it distorts the picture quite a bit. So in order to fix that, you can either say stack. And that's going to put one copy of the picture in for each number on the left. And your other option, which I'm going to use in this case, is I'm going to say stack with scale. And I'm going to set this to two, although I could set it to anything that I wanted. So in other words, we'll get one picture for every two units. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm going to pause the video for a second, and I'm going to come back and complete the chart just so you see what it looks like. Okay, and you can see that my pictures are now in there. Uh, I don't like that my bars themselves don't stand out very much, so I can select them all with a single click. Go to fill, go to border color, 
I'm just going to pick a simple solid line, maybe a dark blue. And that makes them more readable. Other options I would have would be to click on a chart itself. I could format the plot area. Um, I'm going to go with a solid fill here and maybe a gray. It just makes it stand out a little more. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in decorating that. You can do that with the outside area. You can do it basically with any part of the chart. Okay, last thing I'd like to look at um, before we complete is what happens if I want to edit a chart that I've already created in the sense that I want to add more data. So let's say that I have a second class come in. And the second class also takes the survey. And... Let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16. Now let's say a lot of people made another choice there. How can I incorporate that data into my existing chart without um, having to do it over again? Well, you can right-click up near a corner somewhere, and you should get a Select Data option. And this will allow me, using this button in the upper right, to reselect my data. Now, I'm going to wind up with a little bit of a problem here. I've got these nice bar charts. Um, let me take the first set here and just simplify them a little bit. Um, format data series. Okay, just to make it easier. My problem is, is that at this point I probably do need a legend. And I don't have one, and I don't really have a way to distinguish these two strands of data. So I'm going to insert a blank cell over here, and I'm going to say class 1, class 2, or you could put anything you want in there, Mr. S's class, Ms. J's class, period 4, period 7, whatever. Let me reselect one more time. There it is. And this time I'm going to include, not only, I'm going to include these two, and to do so I have to pick the blank cell, and that's okay. You need to do that. Excel will figure out what's going on. Okay, so now that I've selected this data, I can go back in and I can turn my legend back on. And there it is. So I'm going to have to do a little resizing here. And you can see now that it's showing me who class 1 and class 2 is. This legend, by the way, is also editable. I can change the size. I can change the shape by clicking and dragging on it. Ooh, come on. There you go. Okay, and I could also change a background color. I could put a border around it. I could do any of the things that we've done previously. Uh, so those are the basics of making a bar chart. There will be lots of things um, that you can do in addition. If I right-click on the format axis, you can see that there are controls in here. Everything's on auto now, but I could set a minimum and maximum value. I could do a fixed value. So let's just say that I'm going to start at, uh, I think everybody selected at least two, so I'll start at two and... I'll go to 12. And you can see that left a lot of room at the top that I don't need. Um, but it started at 2, and this is a good thing to talk to, to students about. This is one way the data can be manipulated. By adjusting starting and ending points on a particular graph, you can give a particular impression and can try to lead people to maybe an inaccurate conclusion, etc. So that's a good thing to call our attention to, so they're aware of it when they see other graphs and charts out there.